All right, so for example A, we're supposed to draw a tessellation of equilateral triangles. So an equilateral triangle, of course, is a triangle that's the same on all three sides. And we're going to tessellate around one of the corners of that triangle. So if we put a bunch of triangles together side by side like this, yeah, you can see we end up forming this shape that we have here next to it. And it takes a total of six triangles to get all the way around. But since an equilateral triangle has 60 degrees on each angle, makes it 180 total, right? We could see that we need to get all the way around a 360 degree circle. We're doing that 60 degrees at a time. That evenly divides by six. So we shouldn't be surprised to find that it takes six triangles to get all the way around that same corner, right? We also shouldn't be surprised to find that we can evenly tessellate that because it did divide evenly. Not every shape is going to do that. In fact, most won't. Yeah, but if we can find one that does, then we know that we can actually tessellate with that shape. So if we go along and we start drawing these triangles, then we just keep drawing out our shapes out here in equilateral triangles all around. Going on and on and on, building out. We can see that this figure, whoops, that one wasn't very good. We can see that this figure can get pretty complex here after a while. Yeah, and we can see, in fact, the, I think there's, yeah, we have an image of one here. The same, we got this same sort of little hexagon all the way around. Why am I not drawing on top? Oh, because I'm not on that layer. There we go. Got the same little hexagon all the way around over and over and over again. And the hexagon was the result of the triangles, right? So it's as if we took one hexagon and started tessellating it which also tells us we could tessellate hexagons if we wanted. But in this case, we're doing it by tessellating triangles, which form hexagons once they're done side by side. So here's one example of a tessellation drawn with equilateral triangles. And there's different patterns you can do with it, but this is one, one example of it. All right, so example B says, does a regular pentagon tessellate? Well, first let's do it mathematically. Yeah? We know that what we need to do is get 360 degrees, and we're going to do it with a pentagon. Well, a pentagon is 108 degrees on each angle. Yeah? So 360 degrees divided by 108 degrees. If we actually do that math, where's my calculator? Clear 360 divided by 108, we get 3.33333. So obviously that doesn't go in evenly. So that tells us, no, it's not going to tessellate. We can tell that right away. Yeah, 3.3 .3 repeating. And if we take a look at what how it appears visually, we can see that if we put three pentagons side by side, we end up with a gap in between two of them that there's no way we're going to fit another pentagon into. So there's no way we're going to be able to tessellate these pentagons. We'd have to do it with another shape. We could do a tessellation with pentagons and diamonds, like so, and then go on and draw more pentagons around and do another diamond over here somewhere. Yeah. So we could do that. We just can't do it with just the pentagons. It won't work. Okay. And then finally, for example C, how many squares will fit around one point? Well, this one's pretty easy, actually. We know, again, that we need to get 360 degrees. Oops, 360 degrees. And a square is 90 degrees on each corner, four right angles, right? So 360 divided by 90, that's four. So we know it's going to take one, two, three, four squares to surround a single point. And since that goes in evenly, we know that this square will indeed tessellate, and we can draw an entire figure out of nothing but one square next to another square all around until we have a whole image. That's it. That's the last question in the entire book. Thanks for hanging around with me. Hope it went well for you.